Hi everybody, this is James McCoy with the Forsyth County Chamber of Commerce. I appreciate everybody that joined us for our teleconference on Friday on how to lead and manage a workforce that's now largely working from home. I appreciate everybody who could join us. I also understand that there were quite a few people who couldn't join us because of some technical difficulties. So for those of you who couldn't join us, we've asked our panelists and our moderator to please submit uh, a short video that really is their summary of the, the panelists' conversation and their best recommendations for all those of us who are managing folks that are now working from home. It was a great discussion. Their tips on this video is a very, very good discussion. And we pick up at the end of their uh, clips uh, for the rest of, of the teleconference for those of you who want to continue uh, uh, watching the rest of the teleconference. Really appreciate everybody's support. It was a phenomenal effort among uh, really 22 different chambers and business organizations around the state. Uh, we have more to come. Please uh, keep an eye out on uh, Together for FOCO. Uh, that's Together and the number four, F-O-C-O dot com. Uh, for updates on uh, the latest teleconferences and, and videos that we'll be posting afterward. Hopefully these are helping uh, uh, everybody uh, survive this difficult time. Uh, we're all in this together and uh, we really appreciate your support and, and engagement in it. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining this presentation of how to manage a work from home workforce. My name is Carter Patterson. I am the chairman of the Forsyth County Chamber of Commerce and welcome to our teleconference. The Forsyth County Chamber is proud to co-host this event with several of our chamber colleagues throughout the state and I'd like to recognize them really quick. The Georgia Association of Chamber of Commerce, the G Greater Georgia Black Chamber of Commerce, the Georgia Chamber of Commerce, Council for Quality Growth, the German American Chamber of Commerce, the Greater North Fulton Chamber, the Johns Creek Chamber, the Dawson County Chamber, Alpharetta Chamber, Covington Newton County Chamber, Henry County Chamber, Bainbridge and Decatur County Chamber, Habersham County, Dublin Lawrence, Coastal Georgia Minority Chamber, Clayton County Chamber of Commerce, Effingham Chamber, Toombs Montgomery, Noonan Coweta, and Forsyth Monroe. And especially we want to thank Georgia Highlands Medical Center for allowing us to use their facility today. Our panelists today have all different areas of expertise on this topic. Holly Bale is the Talent and HR Manager at OneSpring, a design consultancy helping clients innovate faster with best-in-class user-centric experiences. In the Atlanta community, she serves as the Executive Vice President of Educational Programs at SHRM Atlanta, a mentor for Greater North Fulton Chamber of Commerce, Women in Business, and serves on the steering committee at Tech 400. She's developed a reputation as a trusted advisor because of her dedication to excellence, servant leadership, and commitment to community. Patrick Kelly, is an information security veteran with over 20 years of experience in the field. He has spoken on panels with members from the FBI, the CIA, and NSA. He is an ongoing cybersecurity expert for 11 Alive and NBC News. His research has been covered by Fortune, Bleeping Computer, CNN, NBC News, The Guardian, Globe, and, I'm sorry, The Guardian, Globe and Mail, and Krebs Security Online. Further, he has worked extensively in the entertainment and finance verticals in the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Ireland. Mark Travis is the owner of Mark Travis & Company. Mark guides organizations to new revenue by showing them how to remove friction from how they deliver value to customers. He helps them ask better questions to uncover the forces that affect their businesses internally and externally so that they can better equip their organization to deliver maximum value. He has been creating business systems and disruptive software solutions for decades and helps pioneer new ideas with grounded pragmatism. Thank you all for being with us. Hi, this is Holly Bale, and I'm gonna share with you some tips to work from home. 
To start off with, having a plan in place is really important, whether that plan is cascaded down from leadership in your organization or it's your plan on how you want to work from home. Having a plan, being organized, and knowing what's expected and the results that you need to return will help you um, truly have a good experience working from home. Um, having that process, I've heard many people speak about continuing with the same routine in the morning that you still get up, have your coffee. Um, you may be a little more casual working from home than getting dressed up, but still kind of following that same timeline so that way you're just staying uh, consistent um, and staying in a good routine. From the plan, um, really think about how you're going to communicate, whether that communication is going to be individual and you have one-on-ones um, with your supervisors or managers, or having team collaboration. The team collaboration would be important as well because there's going to be projects or engagements you're working on, team deliverables. It's great to bring the team together using platforms such as Slack, um, Google Hangout, Zoom, um, go to meeting. Um, there's also one Microsoft Teams. You have lots of options and platforms to be able to connect. Use technology, let it be your friend. You still need to see one another. And again, it can be done individually, it could be done in teams. Once the pandemic um, moves away, and it will, if you're still working from home, have a plan as to when you'll be coming into the office and still having a human connection. Whether that's working from home three days a week and going into the office too, again, establish a cadence that works, especially for anybody that's new um, in an organization or on a team. That human connectivity and building a relationship, um, building trust, understanding the culture of the organization, will be important to that person's success, their level of engagement, and the longevity that they'll have in the organization. Don't take it for granted. Um, everybody does need that connection and make sure that it's being done. Now, some fun things that I've seen um, are people putting together Spotify team playlist where somebody will initiate it, people can contribute their songs, you listen to it while you work, and then try to guess who songs who. Kind of fun, right? I love music, I think it's fun. I have seen virtual tours of offices. I have been introduced to pets and kids. I have seen what people are eating for lunch and sharing of healthy recipes, which I love. Um, I've also uh, have been referred, uh, you know, free yoga classes or virtual tours of museums. And virtual happy hours are a thing. So there's lots of creative ways as well um, right now that you can throw in um, to have some fun, to celebrate, um, and be human uh, through this pandemic that we'll be through um, hopefully soon. Fingers crossed. Be safe, be well, and um, space and grace will get us through this. Thanks. Good afternoon. First, thank you for joining us earlier today for the teleworking teleconference that was provided by the Forsyth Chamber of Commerce. Thank you to all those that were involved in making that event possible. Thank you for attending. It's our understanding that there might have been some technical difficulties during the process of delivering that today. So we wanted to take a moment to share some of the more important notes that we wanted you to have um, to go forward. So one of the first questions we were asked was, what's the best way to connect um, our remote employees and our remote staff to the organization's network. You have a couple options in this situation. One would be the use of a VPN or a virtual private tunnel. Um, but should you go with this option, you'll need to make sure that sufficient firewall rules are in place to prevent any sort of malware or ransomware from transferring from that unknown asset into your environment. The more popular and I believe the more secure solution would be something such as Citrix or remote desktops provided by Microsoft. Again, if you're going to use these solutions for remote desktop capabilities, I recommend that you use some sort of two-factor authentication. This could be Duo or it could be a text message or something similar. If you do have a plan to go or if you do have a desire to go and, and use these remote tools, I highly recommend that you have a plan and you understand exactly how you're going to execute that. Extending your network into untrusted environments such as the internet and remote locations can be dangerous. So if you don't know exactly how to go about doing it, reach out to us and we'll be glad to assist you. 
Another solution we were asked is, or we were asked about was, what if remote desktop solutions don't exist? In these situations, we would highly recommend that you use something so, something like Zoom or go to meetings where you can record those meetings should you need to listen to them or share them later. Additionally, there are platforms such as SharePoint, Ignite, that you can use to share files back and forth. You should have a policy in place so that employees understand how they should manage that data and how to keep it private and, and to security as needed. Now, additionally, we were asked if traffic should be routed entirely through the enterprise network. Our answer to that would be probably not. Um, without having some sort of privacy policy in place that's well understood that monitoring will exist, or if you have shared assets that are owned by the organization that's understood that these are just for work, um, you might actually open to yourself to see some liability should you monitor and review all traffic that has passed through the network. Lastly, we were asked what sort of policies that an organization should have in place. We're a big fan of policy and procedure here at Critical Path. We understand that the expectation can only be followed and adhered to if that expectation is set firsthand. So we recommend having a business continuity plan. This plan should encompass all the different steps that you're gonna to use to make sure that your business continues to operate as close to normal as possible. And these are unnormal times. Additionally, you should have a plan on how you're going to respond to a pandemic. This should include remote working, it should include time off, um, or what sort of um, expectation that an employee should have, for, have from the company regarding that response to sick time and testing. You should also have a teleworking policy and procedure. This should explain what hours an employee should work, what the expectations of them when they're working with the organization. It should also put in place an understanding that you work during the established hours as you define as an organization and to withhold from reaching out to people during their personal time after hours. It can be very difficult to balance work and home. And when we're looking at putting these things together um, and bringing entire families and businesses into one home, these can provide their own challenges. So again, having a good teleworking process in place and policy that explains what the expectations are of the employee is gonna help in a, in a great deal. Lastly, there should be some employee leave rights. Unfortunately, we expect that there is going to be some significant illness. It's also possible that some of the employees may lose someone that's near to them due to this coronavirus pandemic that we're dealing with. It will set employees' minds at ease if they understand what the expectation is and they understand what time they can take for grieving or what time they can take should they become ill. Should you have any other questions or concerns um, about how you should move forward in your organization from a technical point of view or a policy and procedure, I urge you to reach out. Hi, this is Mark Travis. They asked me to say a few words before the video uh, that you're about to see. Uh, we shot it uh, on site we maintained our distance, you know, so that was a good thing. Um, I'm approaching work from home from a management perspective. Uh, I think this is a, an incredible opportunity, uh, not one we wanted, especially right now, but there's never a good time, so you may as well take advantage of it. Uh, but I see a big opportunity in remote work. If you can set up your business processes and technology such that it doesn't matter if your employees are sitting on site or remotely, uh, then that means your workforce is that much more powerful. If they're lost when they go off site, which some of them might be in your case, uh, that means you need to look at your processes and how you work together as a team. So right now there's probably a lot of fear out there, uh, fear of losing control, fear of loss of productivity, profitability. Uh, those are valid concerns. Um, what you need is a growth mindset. And a growth mindset means that you uh, trust in people uh, to do their best to rise to the occasion. And it's a two-way street. You'll see some of the talk about that in this video. And you really need to uh, look at the business processes uh, that are broken right now. So have everybody in your organization make notes. What work? What still works? You know, what, what, what's still working? And then, you know, what's broken? Uh, I know a lot of cases, a lot of people aren't yet in the cloud. 
this is a great opportunity to be in the cloud. The cloud actually has much more robust security. Uh, you have to turn it on properly, but once it's on, it's uh, so much better than what most people have uh, inside their systems. Uh, and you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's not my area. But it's something to think about because you need to enable your people. So the core concept that you need to keep in mind is you're in business to provide a profit uh, to your shareholders. Uh, and that means having good people doing good things for your customers. And everything needs to revolve around that value. So look at your business processes again right now in light of today. Uh, we're not going back to tomorrow. Uh, you know, the, the ship has sailed. <laughs> so this, this is the new reality. Um, you need to have a more agile organization. There's a lot of ideas that you can take from uh, agile in the community of uh, technology uh, where you, uh, you know, break apart things to give to a team uh, with goals and expectations. Uh, you can't expect to be the draconian, fixed-minded person who sits there and goes, can I, can I see if, you know, what's on my people's screen so I can make sure that they're working? They have remote software for that. Don't be that person. <laughs> Trust your people. Uh, you know, if they need to take breaks, come and go, whatever. But, you know, you set strategic goals, tactical goals uh, for, you know, different time periods within the week. Uh, and if everybody meets those, good. And it's all in support of that value that you provide the customer. And as a leader, you need to be strong. We'll talk about Ed Bastian a little bit with Delta. Guy is a role model for uh, how you talk to people during a crisis. Um, some of the advantages I had of a remote workforce, I mean, you know, think about if you could tap a worldwide talent pool. Uh, of people that live anywhere, but they integrate into your team as if they've always been there. Uh, that solves some of your talent problem, right? You don't have to worry if they're local. Uh, you usually have happy employees that work remotely. Um, you have to manage less office space, maybe configure the office space differently than you would have. Uh, definitely saves energy. You save gas. I mean, think of how much gas we would save if everybody worked from home. I mean, that's, that's not going to happen, but uh, you know, saves commute time. What, what if you could get back two, three hours of your day every day by not having to commute into work? Uh, you know, these are great things. I think that there's an ideal balance, and we'll talk about that in the session, uh, between working from home and working on site. But uh, look at your strategy. Look at your business partners. Look at what business you're in. Uh, what's broken? What can be fixed? Uh, what steps can you take to keep people comfortable and, and really hone in on that engine? There's probably a lot of stuff you can get rid of. Uh, the bottom 4% of your customers probably cost you 50% of your overhead if you look at activity-based costing. Um, so enjoy. Uh, I think it's a great session. If you have any questions, please feel free to call. What we were doing in 2007 or 2009. And for some of you that are, that are on this, on this, Televised thing that we're doing here. Um, this might be your first time, um, but I promise you, you know, if you just stay calm and you stay in it and you keep working the problem and you stay diligent to it, that this will not be your only time. And I don't want that to to, to surprise you or, 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 to, or to make you feel like maybe this isn't worth it. But understand that if you do retrospection and you learn some of these lessons on this first pass. Now that I'm in my second pass of doing this as a business owner, it's, it's a lot easier to adapt and, and know what you need to do. Yeah. So thank you for an input. Holly, what does the future look like for the point of Not your cake, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, the future. Uh, the future. We can talk a little bit about what we're seeing now. But the future um, is, to, is going to, of course, you know, look different. Uh, this pandemic, um, right now, I mean, it, it likes everybody, you know. Um, the, maybe not, you know, the young, but I mean, it, it's, it doesn't matter religion, race, socioeconomic status, anything along those lines. It's, it's doing its job. And so, um, one of the things we want to make sure we're doing again is the retrospective. And that was, you know, one of the things when, you know, I was 
thinking about the lessons learned. I, I love to always start with the why or you know what is the end result we're, we're trying to accomplish. It's where my brain naturally goes. And so I start thinking about, you know, for businesses, are we doing retrospectives? You know, it, most companies should have a risk group or, you know, the business continuity or safety. You know, you have a council. And, you know, these groups of individuals should be now having those conversations. Let's go ahead and start doing our retrospectives in certain areas. Um, should we be doing, you know, um, <clears throat> economic scans or environmental scans? Uh, especially if you're a global uh, organization, you should be doing those on a regular basis. It's not just now that it's, again, part of your continuity plan. We're doing these regular checks just to be able to see where our business stands with the market. Um, another idea for building for the future, um, I love SWOT analysis. I think these are very simple, basic things to do because you're also testing the flexibility of your organization, but you're also testing the flexibility of weaknesses and threats for competition as well because this will pass, right? And we're going to want to make sure that we're competitive and we're profitable. So those are three things, you know, for me, doing retrospectives, environmental scans, SWOT analysis are just a few management techniques that you know companies can do to help position themselves for you know, a better future. But if we're looking at where China is, um, China's been four weeks in um, and they're going back to work. That's what we're hearing. Um, so you know we're we're behind that as far as you know the length of time that it's taken to get to us here. But um, what we're seeing is that they're slowly getting back to what new normal looks like. We're in a new world of work now, and the areas where I think have an opportunity for future change is definitely going to be, do we continue to open workspaces? Um, I think that would be interesting. Uh, my personal opinion is I don't like them. Uh, <laughs> um, so you start thinking about, okay, what will workspace look like? Um, now, and you mentioned this earlier, that companies are looking at, we can do work from home in certain positions. It makes sense that we can do this. What will that then become, you know, what will that look like? Um, mobility will come into play as well. Um, how do we connect socially? Um, I'm an extrovert, if you can't tell. So this is, impacts me, um, kind of hard. Because I do like to be around people. So this is, this is the first time I've gotten out of my house other than the grocery store. So it's been nice to have some people interaction, but you can see we're spaced. Um, we all did jazz hands or, you know, <laughs> you know, bops, but we have not had any connectivity, uh, right. skin to skin around here. Everything's PG 13. Um, and, and speaking of which, I'm sure no one missed the irony of us not doing this from <laughs> home, right? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, just working, just working. Working. Yeah. <laughs> we're working, we're perfecting yeah. on what on what new is going to look like. Yeah. But, I, but I do think the future, we're, we're shaping that right now. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, and again, kind of to reinforce the things are going to be okay. Um, I have a very, very close friend um, that lives about 30 minutes outside of Wuhan. And I've been speaking with him almost daily um, since the beginning of January. And, you know, he walked through, you know, how they were responding to it. And that's been played out on the news and videos. I'm not going to rehash all of that. But, but the upside is he did start reaching out to me last week saying, you know, we're, like, we're starting to go back to work. You know, he's a English as a second language teacher. And, and he's like, it's different. You know, we're, we're not close together, but. You know, but this does pass, um, and you know we did suffer losses, and, and as hard as that was, it is nice to say that things are starting to come back around, um, and we're starting to see some of the nitrogen dioxide pick up in the satellite imagery, showing that vehicles and transportation are starting to fire back into up in China. So the retrospection is important because the story doesn't stop here. Um, so that's a good thing. And I, you know, I highly recommend that people stay connected. But like right now, I'm, I'm a part of a bunch of different groups, and we're doing, even though we're all kind of introverts because we're in the space, um, we're making it a point to get on video chats um, and to talk to each other around the world. And we have one that's running a rolling video conference around the clock, 24 hours a day. 
I was a seaboard checking in, and they're just kind of, hey, I'm still here. You know, and this is where we are today. Because you'll find, um, not to make small of a problem, because the problem is a really big problem, and we have to respect the problem. But as you start talking to people that are functioning and they're working in this normal, you do realize that there's a tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go to one of the questions from uh, one of our listeners out there. Uh, and I'll just read it verbatim. I think this is going to create a new normal. It sounds like we all agree with. If we figure out how to make this work for a few weeks, why wouldn't we mostly keep it going after the fact? So, yeah, <laughs> I spent a lot of time thinking about this. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to alienate myself from all of the people that are listening. <laughs> um, I think that yes, this is good. Um, I think that knowing that we can do this is important. That being said, uh, relationships are really hard to form over video chat or over cell phone. The best relationships that I have in my business are ones that I've formed over 20 years of going and seeing people and talking to people. Um, Apple, which um, I think it would be very hard for us to argue their success um, at this point is I'm seeing more Apple devices in this room than to any other. Um, Steve was very strong about people bumping into each other, and some of the greatest inventions that happened were happenstance. They were these moments where people were passing each other in the hallway, and they were talking, and they were and they were coming up with these innovations. Another thing that concerns me, uh, I think it's really important that we, we kind of take a moment, and pause, and break to understand it is that. We're just in our couple of few weeks of doing this. Um, I manage workforces that are work from home and they're in their own little places and they're isolated. And I have to tell you that, that there is a dramatic hit on mental health. Um, someone that starts working with me, I will watch them very closely for the first 90 days, 120 days. They're they're very happy and they're very kind of cavalier and they're very open in the things that they say and they do. Over many, many years of managing these remote workforces, you start to see depression ease in on many of these people. You start to see their marriages break down um, because they're around these people, the same people, all the time. When you go to work, you get a break from the problems that you have at home. When you go home from work, you get a break from all the problems that you have at work. If you're working from home and you don't have a very dedicated, disciplined, um, deliberate approach to separating these things, what you'll find out is that you're dealing with both problem sets all the way around the clock. And we ended up having workforce staff that wanted to come into work. I don't mind working remote, but I want to come into work at least one week a month. Um, and, and yes, on the gate, nobody says this. And, and trust me, I didn't either. Um, but I urge people to be mindful of mentally where you are. And the Army has a battle buddy system. You know, in critical path, we're broken up the same. We're all feared off of the battle buddy. But keep a close eye on the people that you work with. And make sure that they're reaching out for help when they come into mental duress. And because that's the reason why it's really hard to make this a long term sustainable plan. It's not so much the business impact, it's the personal impact on people that are working on this. I completely agree with that. Um, and that's one of the problems I struggled with. You know, I have over the past 25 years. There was one point where I didn't leave my house for two and a half weeks. Uh, and you know, you just get cabin fever for one. Um, and I've worked with teams where nobody was in Atlanta. I had, you know, one person was in Raleigh, one was in New York, one was in California, uh, and then you know, globally. Uh, and I completely agree. It was so, such a joy when you show up at a trade show and you get to be there. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's a happy medium. Uh, I mean, some of the benefits I see, you know, saves commute time. I mean, what would two hours to your day be, you know, doing right. something else? Sure. Uh, saves energy. Obviously, you're not burning that gas. You know, CO2 emissions and stuff goes down. Uh, less distractions at home. 
less office space to manage at work. We've got happy employees, low blood count pool. But I think there's a happy medium between people who may be working from home three days a week when they come in the office two days a week. You know, that certainly helped keep traffic down and other people sort of, you know, staggered. But you do need that, that social interaction. So I agree. We need new tools to help that because you're right. You know, people have gotten to where they adjust to take care of, you know, they leave work problems behind, they leave home problems behind. We're going to have to come up with new coping mechanisms as opposed to keeping that balance. We just have to find a new balance, but that right. would be a happy new when I manage um, my security team in Southern California, uh, for those that are definitely going through a, I don't want to commute, you know, this drives me out of the money. Mm -hmm. um, Live in Southern California for a while, four hour round trip, commute five hours on Friday. Um, and so, totally understand. Um, our balance was like you just said, we had four days that you worked at home, mm -hmm. the fifth day, came into the office. We would usually make the fifth day of Monday. So that we could all kind of start same place, same thing. Um, and then when we had yeah, we exactly, yeah, um, yeah. and we actually did what was called we do stand ups, mm -hmm. so like literally everyone on Monday stands up. We talk to each other, um, and then um, we video chat for the rest of the week. But there needs to be exact, exact, um, there needs to be kind of a balance that works. And for every company, it's probably going to be a little bit different. Well, I know the Georgia Department of Transportation is probably really thrilled that uh, <laughs> the roads aren't going to be so crowded for a while. But, uh, but, uh, I want to take another question from Paul, uh, or from one of our viewers. Uh, uh, perhaps you can share some recommendations on which platforms work well, such as video conferencing, electronic document signing. But Certainly. Um, technical, technical question. Um, so I highly recommend Zoom and, and go to my, my go to my PC, go go to my meeting. I think, I think that's one. Um, to go to my PC, yeah. um, but the meeting option has been great um, because I'll record the meeting locally. I, I think by now those that are remote working, we figured out that we're saturating the bandwidth, and the ability of our of our networks to carry right now. It's going to get better. Um, but you probably have seen the choppiness and the kind of that weird um, cell phone calls from inside fish tank. Um, but the ability to have a have a meeting and then record it so that you can distribute it in another way so you can watch it is really good. Um, I love Ignite uh, for file sharing and, and the reason being is you can do two factor authentication. You can build it into Teams. Um, you can control exactly who can see what. I, I believe now you can digitally sign some things. If not, there's always a trusted document center around there. The biggest thing to keep in mind is um, you're no longer um, trying to secure the, the corporate asset anymore. It's kind of breaking that down a little bit. Two weeks ago, we were having firewalls and we were protecting the endpoint that lives inside our environment. We have to change our focus. Right now, the goal is to protect the data. Because we don't know what device it's going to be on this place. So if you change the focus to we're protecting the data, not the asset, then that moves into the point of find a flexible centralized platform so that the company and, and, the, mem and the members and the, and the managers and the, and the employees themselves can control that data. I think Ignite is great. Um, I think SharePoint is wonderful. So they you said you like a cloud type of system that yes. everybody can access from wherever. What about um, Dropbox is, is, is hit or miss for me, um, and I'm not trying to be disparaging of the Dropbox team. Um, it's just I've had a few breaches, and I've not been super satisfied with how they responded over time. Um, but yes, cloud, the reason why I'm going to cloud, even though I, I much prefer a VPN, and you've got a laptop that the company has given to you that you're supposed to use, I don't think that's the Reality of where we are today. But I think that's where we want to be, and we're just not. Um, so, show the sell for the moment. Um, so, there's some cloud based options. Um, Office 365, amazing. Uh, yeah. Teams are okay. Um, I spent a lot of time on Slack. Um, Slack is a good 
Yeah, the only thing the only thing I would mention as a word of caution, and this is not to land on you know negatively on Google in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, but if we have government parties that are joining the call, if there are some interesting new regulations in 2020 that require the data around government entities to to remain in the United States. I know that Google is trying to make sure that their disaster recovery fell over that stays inside that country, but it's not quite there. Um, I've had a lot of back and forth conversations. Um, Microsoft right now, um, if you store data in the US and in their data centers, then they fail over, especially if you're a government-based account, it's gonna fail over to the United States. Again, remember that when we're done with this, we are we're all gonna have to answer to those same regulatory compliances that we were fighting two weeks ago. So just be mindful. I know that's a big topic. Um, and if you need to reach out for more information, I'll be glad to provide it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to take another question from one of our uh, uh, attendees. Uh, how can you manage setting some expectations with your family for work? I can answer that. <laughs> um, Go ahead. So I'm in a unique <laughs> place where I'm part of the sandwich generation. generation. I have um, my beautiful mom that lives with, with us, and I have a teenager that's 14. Um, we also have a dog, um, and the husband's out working. Uh, he'll be joining us working from home on Monday, so it's going to be a lot in our home. Um, but quite honestly, I mean, look, my family approach was we have family dinner, and we sat down and talked about it. We actually started talking about um, this a week ago over dinner. To really walk through um, what is the impact of the virus. I was very curious for my mother who is um, turning 80 this year, what her thoughts were on, on the virus and her concerns. And her concern was, you know, her granddaughter coming home from school and being a carrier and that she could catch it. So it was a really wonderful, you know, sit down dinner opportunity to really talk through calmly how we wanted to approach this. And so we immediately started putting in um, kind of our home rules into place. Uh, you know, we talked about hand washing and having people over. And quite honestly, I mean, my team is an introvert and she loves being in her bedroom. So, you know, that's been very easy. But I think you just, you know, for me, you just you have to have that conversation and you need to be calm and say, you know, that just because we're home, you're, you're at school, at home, and I'm working from home, it's going to be business as usual. It's the same thing with, you know, working from home policies you have at work. We're still going to get up, and here's the time we can get up, and here's where we're going to work. I will say around 3 o'clock, my daughter is knocking on my office door, and she thinks I'm a playmate. She wants to pray, and I'm like, well, you know, here's what I have left to do, and, you know, we'll do that. But I think it's always... Very good communication, setting clear expectations. It can be inconsistent with it. Right. That's the big thing because as soon as they see a break and they're inconsistent, um, my mom has been awesome. She thinks it's great. Um, the dog has been super co cooperative. Um, and, I've, and it's it's working out really well. So that's been my experience. But again, I'm keeping in touch with other people. Um, and they're talking about the kids sometimes thinking this is still. They're on break, and that you know, they need to get together with their friends and having some hard conversations that their friends don't understand the impact of the social distancing. So uh, I can say in the Vale household, it's, it's gone well, but um, I do think my husband and I took that leadership approach as to let's get everybody on board the same page and in full agreement. So so far so good. It looks great at us. Unfortunately, I have the most amazing. Part. She's incredible, um, and she 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 been that way forever. I mean, she definitely like being a business owner. I'm naturally driven. You know, my story in it, um, and she was very good at communicating. And she was very good at, at coming along and, and working with me to kind of set boundaries that were healthy for the house, but also set boundaries that were, were good for me, so that I wasn't getting to. Um, we worked in and, and television and some of these stressors and problems. But you know, having a good, you know, having a good husband at home and me having an amazing wife at home that 
super supportive, super understanding, works through these problems. Uh, I think that's really key because you get to set the expectation, one of, of what, how the households can operate now. But another really great thing is that your children get to see what a good example of how dealing with a global pandemic, what that looks like in a healthy home and how a family, how the, the spouses and the significant others don't work, don't fight each other, but they fight with each other um, towards this problem and they fight together against the problem. It's a really good point. Well, you. Okay. Well, we got down. Really that. I've been working at home so long, and I'm the first, and so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, you've got, Sorry you've got people who are going to be at home for a while, and then there's going to be dysfunctional families, and there's a business owner, and you have to look at it from that point of view. I applaud you know, the home situation, and um, yeah, we'll look at some of that. Makes that a bad life or whatever, but, you know, it's, different people are going to react differently. There are going to be some problems with people working from home oh, because, yes. uh, you know, there's, there's they barely get along now, okay. and now that they're forced together for a while, uh, so you're just gonna have to work through those issues. And when things sort of return to normal, maybe you're gonna have to allow your employees to, you know, if they want to work, you know, your office, that's fine. But you know, you'll, you'll have to have that flexibility. I'm gonna add up something in here. I uh, have a very close friend of mine, and she she coined this phrase, but she she called it grace and space. You know, you need to extend everyone some grace. Needs some space, and I and I love it. Um, but it's it's so true. I mean, my home is my home, but I also have other people that are you know, very challenged with. You know, I think about being single parents who have multiple children. You know, different ages of children have different type of dynamics, and it's mine, mine, mine. Shut the door. And it's like, me. I have a couple that is, is experiencing that same thing, and you know, it, he's sh sh very stressed. And so again, um, having the human relationships are very important because I'll get a Slack message. What can I do? You know what? You know um, because his dynamic is very different. When you kind of talk through it and being supportive, and you know, there's nothing out there that's going to be perfect. But I think um, taking a deep breath, have, it goes back to being prepared, having a plan. For, you know, for your family, you may want to have you know breaks that you come up with. You know, at 10 a.m. We're going to break and take 15 minutes together and maybe we go for a walk or you know if we make it to four you know maybe we'll have ice cream sandwiches see so, yeah, i think there's some ways that you can get creative just to have kind of goals in place to be able to make that dynamic work well um i presume we still have several more questions that we're not going to be able to get to today but we were going to gather those questions up and we will send to uh our hosts here today and try to get answers to you. So um, again, I want to thank you all for joining us today. A uh, special thank you to Georgia Highlands Medical Services for hosting thank us here much. today. Thank you, um, thank you. But, you know, Holly, Patrick, Mark, you guys have been fantastic. I think this has been very informational. Um, and uh, finally, you know, God bless all of you and your families. And uh, with grace and space, we're going to get through this. <laughs> Oh, one more thing to add. Uh, this meeting has been recorded, and we will make sure that that link is available to follow. So, again, thank you for joining us. Have thank a great day. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.